Okay, so hey everyone, uh, I'm sorry you're going to have to rewire your brain a little because we're going to get down from Ron's very high level talk on the future of the community to a very mundane technical problem that we've been solving. Um, so what I'm going to talk to you about today is uh, how we can make the Nix daemon run as much as possible without being root. So, uh, well, let's first try and understand why we want to do that. So for a security-minded person, uh, running Nix like in multi-user mode, essentially it's running this big C++ code base. Uh, I've just checked, it's around uh, 60,000 line of code. Uh, that has never been properly audited. That's doing some very dangerous things. It's accessing the network. It's running its own custom binary protocol. It's essentially running untrusted code because like the daemon is just running the derivations builders. And so that's the kind of things that, uh, well, I don't mind running it as root on my laptop. I mean, it, it's my it's a single user machine. But if you're uh, running it in a big enterprise context, you definitely don't want to run this as root. So it turns out that Nix fundamentally doesn't require to be root. Like, you can do a single user installation. You don't need to be root, just need to have slash Nix. And well, even that you don't really need. Uh, but that doesn't work uh, when you're using the daemon. Yeah, we can uh, try it. Uh, if like whoop, the slash things are not coming in the right order, but if you try to run the Nix daemon and then as another user you run a Nix command that tries to talk to the daemon, you're going to be greeted by some nice errors with a, you can see the red errors popping up in the middle of the error message. Um, and it turns out that uh, there's two more or less bad reasons for why the daemon requires to be root. Uh, I mean, they were good originally, but now hopefully we can get rid of them. So the first one is that the daemon is trying to do some profile management for the client, trying to be helpful, but um, too helpful for its own good. And the other thing is the garbage collection, um, where for some reason that we're going to see uh, right after, currently the daemon wants to have root access to the system. So, uh, well, can we fix this? Um, well, let's see about that. So the first issue uh, about the daemon trying to help the client a bit too much, turns out that that's mostly an historical artifact. Uh, and we can just let the client do all the profile management by itself. Um, that works, that even makes the code nicer in a lot of ways. A uh, small problem that's kind of breaking uh, the backwards compatibility in a small cases, which is why it's still there. We need to figure out how to migrate things properly. So that's not too much of a problem. Uh, the other problem is the garbage collection. Um, why does the garbage collection need to run as root? Um, well, it works if you're not root. It works even very, very well uh, in that if you build something, well, you have this uh, nice result symlink, you can run it. Now you run the garbage collection and the thing just disappeared, which shouldn't be the case. Like you have a root, uh, a GC root, so it shouldn't be garbage collected. But if your daemon is not root, that's not working properly. So uh, let's look quickly at how the garbage collection works uh, to understand why it is so. So what happens when you run Nix builds something is that Nix will create what's called an in direct route. So it's going to create something under Nix var Nix, its own internal magic. Um, that's going to be a symlink pointing to the result path that you have. And that result is itself a symlink pointing to something somewhere in the store. And uh, so Nix will inspect this uh, Nix var Nix GC roots thing, follow the symlinks and see that, oh yeah, okay, hello is something that can be reachable. I don't want to delete it. Now, if you remove this result symlink, um, then great, then you remove the symlink path to the store. So Nix, well, the thing is no longer alive as far as Nix is concerned. So it can be garbage collected. That's great because then you can just, you don't have to bother about what's in the GC roots things. You just have your local symlinks. You can delete them to remove the roots and you're happy. But now what happens if, um, what happens if now the daemon doesn't have access to this result symlink? The symlink is there, but the daemon doesn't have the rights to read it. Well, as far as it's concerned, it's like, like if the symlink didn't exist, the, the thing is no longer a GC root. And so it can be garbage collected, which is exactly what we had before. And that's problematic. So uh, can we get rid of that? Um, yes, well, we can uh, just add some layers of stuff on top of that. 
And uh, the best solution we've found so far is that let's just make the Nix daemon run as a normal user, but add another daemon that's going to run as root and just do that, which is a bit silly, but it turns out that uh, it's nicer in many ways because only that new daemon will be, need to be root. And because it's a very small self-contained thing that just has to traverse the file system in many ways, first, it's smaller, easier to edit, and also because it has a re very restricted set of features that it, uh, it's only doing a very small set of things. It just needs read-only access to the system. It doesn't need to do any network access or anything. So now you can sandbox it properly. And uh, that reduces the attack surface of Nix a lot. So that was all I've already exceeded in my five minutes. Sorry about that. And I'm letting uh, the next speaker come in. Thank you.